cleaning the house after the death of Mariano got the letter of the solicitor, um, solicitor you know, that she was going to go divorce him and... Um, he was just to, to sign the letter. Yeah. Oh. And um, Tini said to just get rid of that and don't tell anybody. I know she still told me about it. Who was Mariette Bosch? Was she, by all accounts, the typical other woman? The seductive mistress set to lure a church-going family man away from his wife and children? Was she a conniving, scheming temptress with murder in her heart? Had she a hand in her first husband's car accident? Or was Mariette a simple woman, bereft after her husband's death, finding comfort in her best friend's house, being made aware of their marital problems and hoping for love, falls prey to her best friend's husband's attentions, succumbing to his manipulative charm? Mariette's family refused to speak, but people who were involved with her during her ordeal have come forward to share their impressions. Chris, you were the family lawyer for Justin and Mariette Bosch, and you, you got to know them in your professional capacity over the years. What kind of woman was Mariette? Mariette was a very loving person. She was a, a soft person. I think she was quite a sociable person, and uh, therefore quite likeable. You know, in the church circle, she was known for the lady who can produce the best milk tart in the territory and uh, she was often applauded for that. Was she a religious person? She was certainly a religious person and an uh, integral part of her particular church circle. Mariette and Ria allegedly were best friends. To my knowledge they visited each other at each other's homes, they went on holiday together. Um, I do know they were close because I knew both Mariette and Ria in separate capacities. When the news broke of the crime there was a great deal of shock and disbelief that Mariette could be involved in such a heinous deed. Yes, it's certainly very hard. It stretches anybody's imagination when you know Mariette and think of the heinous crime that was committed. And putting the two together is a very difficult act for anybody who knew her. What kind of man was Justin Bosch? Justin was a client of mine. I knew him well. He was um, a big man, but not only physically. He was a fairly positive, forceful sort of person and he had a, a positive attitude to light, life and quite a domineering personality, I would say. It would seem to me that Mariette experienced the two men in her life very differently. What would you say the main difference was? Again, just different personality styles. Uh, Tini, again, was a different character. I, I have known Tini quite well for a number of years. Again, he's an intelligent man. Uh, he's, he's soft in his approach. He, he mm -hmm. was very charming and mm -hmm. he was intelligent and he was capable. And Mariette experienced him as a sort of almost as her Prince Charming in her life. Yes, and think? I would see him as a man who always saw a lot of different options and might have had trouble confining himself to anyone. Um, but he was certainly a, a, a broad thinker. Do you know how he felt about Mariette? Yes, I have personal um, interaction with Tinny, and he always declared undying love for Mariette. Andrea, how was the marriage? That marriage was troubled. There's no doubt about that. Without doubt, human drama is about to unfold. Hello, Daughter of a former cabinet minister, and in her own right a highly respected woman within the Botswana community, Mrs. Alice Mohwe now runs Ditswanelo, the human rights centre. She had a metaphysical encounter with Mariette. How did it come about that Ditswanelo was, uh, became involved in the Mariette Bosch case? Tini phoned us during the case. We were at the time involved in a death penalty case relating to two Basara, indigenous people, who were on death row and he contacted us to find us so that we could be of assistance in terms of uh, finding funding for him because um, their 
costs were fairly high and we were unable to help by providing funding, but we tried to assist by explaining how proposals could be prepared mm. um, to present to donors and get funding for, for the work you'd like to do. And then you went to see Mariette at some point? Well, I went to see her a week before she was executed. Of course, at the time, I had no idea. She only had a week to go. And um, it was fairly easy talking with her. She as herself, of course, didn't know. She only had a week to go. And I, I then explained that um, I was from Ditonello and had been keen to meet her. And I spent, I must have spent about an hour or so with her. Um, and I also told her about this dream which I'd had. I had dreamt that we'd been given permission to go and witness the execution. And of course, one has to locate the dream within a context where I'd desperately been trying to get hold of her during the previous weeks and, and not been able to get access to her. And I rushed over to the prison. I mean, in Botswana, as you know, we execute by hanging, not by lethal injection. But when I arrived um, in this prison cell, I found Mariette lying on a bed on her back, surrounded by other observers and um, there was somebody in a nurse's uniform standing nearby and I stood behind her because I walked in and she couldn't see me therefore because she was facing the other way and I said Mariette it's Alice I'm here very familiar in this dream which struck you know you're sort of disembodied in a dream and you're sort of yeah. observing and participating at the same time and um, she started to cry and she just had huge tears falling out of her eyes and I held her hands as they gave her the subsequent injections and then as she died, her hands jerked, and I was holding on to her hands. And shortly after the last breath had left her body, her body seemed to change shape. And she was this naked little baby facing me. You know how babies gurgle and kick their legs and look at you, look you in the eye? And that was what this was now Marietta Bosch. So, and I said to the nurse, but she's alive. And the nurse looked at me and said, no, usule, which in my language, that's what I mean, she's dead. I said, usule. And everybody gave me their backs. And I looked at the assistant, my staff member who'd gone with me, um, and I looked at this baby, and I picked up the baby, and I walked out, and nobody stopped me. At which point I woke up. I found it an incredibly disturbing dream, because yeah. I felt that there was something I ought to be doing. She paled at the point when I told her she died. And when I told her about the baby, her eyes just lit up. And it turned out she'd become a born-again Christian in, a, in prison. Of course, I, I had no idea. I'd had no previous contact with her. I, I didn't know much about the person, Mariette. Um, and I then asked her whether she wanted us to pray before we left. And she said, oh, yes, please. And so we, the three of us held hands. And I asked her to pray. And um, she said, God, you know my innermost thoughts. And uh, I believe you sent these people here to help me. She started crying. She couldn't say, Amen. She was sobbing. And it was almost a deja vu moment because there I was holding her hand with her crying again. It was, it was a, a fairly powerful um, experience. And I left. And unfortunately, I didn't ever see her again. Uh, Brian Spill told me that he spoke to you and asked you to meet with Mariette and see whether she was a person who was basically a pleaser, somebody who would please people, or whether she was more somebody that would manipulate or dominate people. What was your assessment? I was rather disturbed by what I observed. Um, she was trying very hard to please, I found, in, in that brief time um, when we met. Um, not pleasing me, but I mean in terms of if you were to characterise in either one, one of the two categories. Um, well, of course, I mean, she'd been locked away for a while, um, separated from family, from friends, and she related very well with the warders, the, the, the prison warders. Um, she'd greet people and there was, there was interaction. There, there was no sign of, of aggression or, or anything like that. Um, but she seemed bewildered at some, at some stage, at some level. Dr. Louise Willifier, South African forensic psychologist and hypnotherapist, had been requested by Mariette's legal team to assess Mariette's personality and to testify during the trial. What kind of personality did Mariette Bosch have? Well, she had a dependent personality. There was no history of any clinically violent behavior or delinquency during her school years. In fact, in Saint Five, she was a prefect. All the people that knew her, knew her as somebody that was soft-spoken,